Yo, what's good everybody? It's Rocky here. Usually I say along with my guy Gav as usual, but unfortunately Gav couldn't be on today. So um, yeah, um, it's all good. I've got John here though. Um, is yours gold as some of you may know him as. Um, how are you, John? I'm good, thank you. Appreciate you uh, inviting me on. Shame Gav's not here to be with us, but um, like, like we said, the show must go on and looking forward to it. Yeah, of course, the, the show must go on. And um, honestly, I'm just looking at your background there and I'm mesmerised by you've got <laughs> two girls on the wall. You've got your amazing, famous heat press that we all know on the Instagram. You've got the gothic Arsenal ball and that amazing rail behind you, man. Honestly, your collection is amazing. So I'm really happy to have you on, man. So, yeah. It's uh, really thank you very much. Um, might as well get right into it, really. Um, as usual with our guests, we tend to ask them, about you know their background, their history with Arsenal, their love for it, and um, yeah, man, I want you to take the reins and delve into why you know you love Arsenal so much and how really you got about um, you know supporting us. So yeah, I'll let you take it. Sounds good. Yeah, I've um I remember doing a few uh, few of these kind of written profiles recently, so uh, I've got experience of talking about it. But we, uh, well, I mean, I guess I started supporting football fairly late um i mean i'm a child of the 80s so <clears throat> unfortunately i missed a lot of the the cool stuff that happened at the end of that decade um and i first really got into football during I guess italia 90 um watching england in that i mean i would have still been quite young uh, but i really really got into football probably 92 93 and um i still didn't have a team obviously england was there and um, I needed a team. My dad and his dad, so my granddad, were massive Fulham fans. Um, and he kind of went home and away in the 70s, like when it was it was a scary place to be on the terraces mm. of the football. And uh, when in the early 90s, they were, they were languishing down the bottom of the old third division, about to go into non-league. Mm. Uh, obviously, we know where they are now, but uh, I don't think he uh, regrets my decision. And I certainly don't. So, uh, yeah, uh, I became an Arsenal fan. And actually, the story behind that is why I put this this ball behind me. Mm. And um, that is the reason that I'm an Arsenal fan. Um, wow. I kind of grew up in Surrey, so just south of London, for those that don't know. And um, it's quite a big area for Palace and Chelsea and stuff. So um i went to a a random store i went to a barn dance with my parents and i must have been when uh, 11 i guess in 93 and um and there was a raffle and my mum won a prize and she she kind of pulled me up with her to go and pick it up and and you could choose what it was and that was what i chose and that wow. was the, basically the reason that i'm here today surrounded by uh, all this stuff but um i have to mm -hmm. say it's probably the best decision i've ever made yeah um, no. other than obviously meeting my wife and having my little boy and stuff but in terms of a constant in my life it's uh it's pretty amazing mm, no that's that's amazing and a lot of people sort of get like replacement over the years for you know when they're like pieces of memorabilia wear out but is that the original one that you picked up on the day yeah absolutely the name uh wow. the signatures have faded i can still see merce i can see tony so uh, I'm not even sure what some of them are, but um, yeah, it's a, it's maybe it's a bit dirtier in reality than what it looks like on the camera. Yeah. But it's always had pride of place through uni. I've never actually pumped it up, so I should do that at some point. But uh, yeah. yeah, really, really happy memories. And that kind of led me to um, get really into Arsenal and learn about the history and, and kind of start to watch the games. It's hard to watch all of them back in those days because they weren't really on. So it was more match of the day kind of thing. Um, and then I picked up my first shirt and, you know, the rest is history. And this is it. This is the yeah. first shirt I ever bought. It's still got uh, the old peeling Premier League patches on it. Wow. Um, and I, I must have had a good foresight back then because I bought it in, in an adult size when I was only like 12. So, wow. um, <laughs> Things were baggy back then, and now it's a perfect fit. So, yeah, 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 all good, all good. No, that's amazing. It's amazing how you have the original um, actual shirt that, you know, you've carried on throughout the years. But is there is there a name set on the back of that? Have you... Um... There is. Um, cool. I'll try and show you. Well, the thing is with this, if you can see that. Yeah, there you go. Obviously. 
it's my, my <laughs> first hero. There you but, go. Um, but the backstory is that um, I love this shirt and I gave it to my dad and I told him, take it to the shop and get right put on the back. Mm. And he came back with it and I was absolutely gutted because he'd gone to like the equivalent of a sports direct now and they'd yeah. put a blue flock name set on with some really kind of curly writing on it. And I was like, oh, yeah, I think I know the one. I think I know the one you're on about. Yeah, I've seen that yeah. one. Yeah. And um, it took me until 2020 to actually realize it was possible to take it off and yeah. replace it. And um, that's something we'll talk about later with the printing. But um, mm. uh, I was delighted when I, I had that replaced. It's not a perfect job, if I'm honest, with the old removal, but you know it, it's bound to be like that given its age but to have the actual the correct one put on the back just means it's worth even more to me now uh, in terms of sentimental value yeah no that's amazing so, of course uh i'd say right he was probably on the forefront of those memories back then and absolutely you know, gold yeah and, yeah that's that's such an amazing it's, story man because i um i mean from uh from 94 i think we probably went to my first game uh mm -hmm. At Highbury, went to Arsenal against Villa on a boxing day. It was a nil nil, and I absolutely loved it. <laughs> so <laughs> never looked yeah. back. And then, and then from there, it was like, um, for those that might remember the old ticket registration scheme, which was previous to the silver membership at Highbury. I picked picked that up in ninety six or ninety seven, and then basically been going ever since. So, yeah. love going to the games, um, and obviously this uh it's a big part of it too yeah that's that's absolutely amazing um of course for well, seeing as you started sort of supporting it from then um sort of that 92 93 um era do you have any other sort of favorable or memorable like sort of vivid errors you know looking back on on your arsenal and history in terms of like games that, that uh, yeah games what we're watching yeah yeah i mean i've been like I, I can't explain how lucky i am to have witnessed some of the moments in arsenal's history like honestly it, it it's really it's incredible so uh, like i said when i picked up my membership in 96 that meant that got me into nearly every home game in the 97 98 season wow. and to <laughs> to be there um to in that season alone seeing ian wright break Cliff Baston's goal scoring record with a hat trick against Bolton. Um, to, and then obviously to the last day of the season, the Everton game, where wow. Tony Adams scored probably one of the most amazing goals wow. I've ever seen live over the top from Baldy and whipped <laughs> it in on the volley over his shoulder. And, and you, you know, I was row two of the North Bank behind the goal. So yeah. I couldn't have been any closer to him when he hit that, and it was just <laughs> incredible, incredible. Yeah, that, that's that's amazing, man. I I don't know what it is though, but I sort of have that feeling right now. Like every time I go to a home game, I just feel like you know I'm witnessing history. You know what I mean? Like every time, um, you know, I see Martinelli score, or you know, when Saka got that pen against Liverpool, I see like a resemblance. Obviously, I wasn't there to witness it vividly, but it must be so. I want to I want to say nostalgic because you know you've you felt that feeling before, but yeah. you know, how does it feel to to compare the both? Like it must there must be resemblance, really. Um, yeah. Now. I, I think one thing my dad always tells me is when we were going through the invincible era, he was like, "You didn't really appreciate how good you were at the time," mm. and he was telling me that at the time, and um, I kind of look back now and think actually he was right. Because, <laughs> you know, the lean years in between, well, I'm going to say 06, even if it was really 04, all the way through till the cup wins later in Wenger's um, tenure. But, uh, yeah, I think to be there then and appreciating it, I was 16, sat on the North Bank, and wow. I was like, this is, this is amazing. So <laughs> I can imagine what it feels like for Arsenal fans now at my age, and a, a bit older that haven't seen some of that stuff live mm. must be incredible. So my advice is enjoy it. Yeah. Um, let's not get carried away, but yeah, that's we can thing. do it. <laughs> yeah, job's not done. <laughs> no, plenty of way to go. I'm looking forward to Sunday, but 
Yeah, me we'll too. see. Yeah, man, that's amazing. Um, another fact or oh, point that I want to um get to now is is your love for shirts. Um, as we see with the rail behind you, um, as we do with all our guests, uh, we usually ask them what their top uh three is in their collection. So um, yeah, I'd like you to to walk us through your your top three, man. Sounds good. I've actually put a few aside to do that. Um, and I'm going to start with actually one I only got quite recently, actually. And it's a bit of an unusual one as well. I was born in 82. And 82, for those that know the um, the kind of, I think it's the historic shirts website that you can see all the images of all the shirts in the past, is a pretty unique one. Wow. The 82 away in green, probably our only ever green away kit, other than that maybe minty number we had with Puma mm -hmm. um, a few years ago. And um, kind of always wanted it because, you know, I'm an 82 boy for me. I'd love us to do an away kit in green and blue mm. again. I'm not sure it'd happen, but um, I just love it. It's so different. And, um, yeah, it's beautiful. And, you know, you can see the age on it. It's as old as me. So, you know, that tells you something. And, uh, yeah, beautiful, beautiful shirt. Mm, that's that's an amazing piece man we we really don't see many of them and that looks like a decent size as well because whenever i see yeah yeah it, that's like, a medium or, yeah it's a medium yeah i've seen lots in yeah. uh kid sizes that i kind of considered and then never did but yeah happy with it so it's a Absolutely nice, nice piece it looks in amazing nick too you see the cannon there it's still strong the afc the umbro like that's that's a unicorn of a shirt, man. I love that. <laughs> I've actually never seen it in the flesh, so I can I can really no. appreciate it through the screen. So that's amazing. Well, I have to say, sadly, I won't be wearing it to the games, but uh, <laughs> it, oh it, man, it, it, but but uh, you know, maybe one day we'll we'll do some uh, display or something. Go and have a look. Yeah, no, that's amazing, man. And and the back as well. Have you got something on the back? I thought I saw something there. Yeah. Of course I do. Yes. Now, I think a lot of people might think this is absolute sacrilege to um, mm. uh, to print up an old shirt. But for me, all of my shirts are printed, all the whole collection. And um, this is exactly, exactly how it was in flock. Same font. Did a lot of research behind it. And my favourite number is eight. And there's probably an obvious reason why <laughs> uh, looking at the players in that shirt yeah. over the years. But um, I think it just tops it off. And, yeah. you know, it's not something I'm ever going to sell. So if it devalues it, then that's fine. It's for me yeah. and then it's for my little boy at some point in the future. That's amazing, man. And I really like the detailing on, on the sleeve as well. It's got the white. So it almost um, has a nice... Yeah, it's, got, it's yeah. got all the piping on it. Yeah, yeah. beautiful. It really connects with the white. I really like that. That's a that's an excellent piece, man. Beautiful. Sick. Um, you ready for shirt number two? <laughs> Should I go into number two? Yeah, man. Well, it's number two is more of an obvious one. And actually, this is my favourite Arsenal shirt ever. Unquestionably. Um, and it is 94 home. It is the shirt. And, yeah. you know, it was the first Nike shirt from the uh, from that era that went on for decades, really. Mm -hmm. um, and they went out full guns blazing, literally, on this one. Yeah. <laughs> um, obviously, we know Drake Ramberg, the designer. Um, uh, he he uh, he's, a, he's good at interacting and uh, loves it when I post up a few of his old shirts. And I just... I just love it. I love the simplicity of the fact that the home, the away and the third were the same. They just yes. had different colour patterns mm -hmm. to them. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they'd never, again, they'd never do that these days because it wouldn't sell as well. Mm -hmm. But I just love that. And, you know, obviously I've got this one up here um, that's a, a pretty rare one. But just to have have the home was one I really wanted. And wow. uh, obviously got the boy <laughs> on the back. <laughs> yeah that's a, that's an epic piece man just just look at the design like the collar is amazing of course you could um you know tuck the collar in as right you did even that was iconic in itself um yeah man that's one of my favorite pieces too man just look yeah. at that design, and man. i think and actually when you look at it i mean the name sets now that that kind of was it kind of a basketball or a 
American football yeah. base to it that kind of made it really stand out. And I just love the love the design of it. And um, I think they've kind of replicated a bit of that this season in the in the Arsenal front. But yeah. I think it's beautiful. And I have to say, there's one other version of this that I do want to show you actually while we're here yeah. for yeah, comparison. Yeah. I got my little boy one. Yeah. In uh, in a kid's size, exactly the same. That's so and cool. Then, obviously, exactly the same as well. <laughs> That's amazing. Like father, like son. That's beautiful, man. So yeah. <laughs> That's maybe so cool. when I take him to his first game, we can both wear that. That's yeah, simple. man, that's that's unbelievable, and yeah, I love I love as you said with the name set, like it's so prominent on the back, and it really sticks out. Of course, the one thing that everybody loves about that name set as well is the swoosh on it as well. Um, yeah. Something like today we don't really see, you know, the the sponsor of, of our club on the back of the of the name sets. So luckily, we have like logos and and the cannons now, which is quite cool. But as you say, just uh, like it's so dominant there on the back, and it, and I think it was Jeff on one of our pods before. He said, as you said, it's like an American sport slash hockey style, um, yeah, name on the back, and I think that's absolutely amazing. I wish we did see more of that um in today's sort of world of football, and of course the material as well. And I'm sure, yeah, I mean, yeah, the, yeah, get I'll get started about flock as long as you want but I think <laughs> yeah. I'd love them to bring that back but you know mm. again it's not something they'll do because it's too heavy and mm. but I just think the quality is so much nicer yeah it does it feels almost a bit like it's a it's a premium shirt so yeah I think that's amazing um I think it's almost because of of the value of it in terms of like cost and stuff like that I'm sure the Premier League mm. and clubs now they look at it from like a financial standpoint and think Hmm, it's you know it's more affordable to just get um you know the yeah, I think, plastic or vinyl, yeah yeah EFA or something like that. that's like the material of it so yeah they prefer to go with that instead um it's it's a bit of a downer for a fan and a collector but you know you you can't you can't uh, grumble. yeah times change though right and I think yeah. there's some cool designs that we've had recently especially this season I really love that mm-hmm. um and I mean to get specific about it. I love it when there's a player with a big number on it. You've got yes. Zinchenko behind you. The Zinchenko name set on the Arsenal yes. font is, it just takes up the whole side of the shirt and it yeah. just looks amazing. Yeah. So, yeah, they've yeah, done that amazing. well. Even, I think, uh, this one, even even this, it's, yeah. just one, it's just one number, really, but it's a huge block there. And you can yeah, really I love it. See, yeah. You can really see it stand out, man. This is, And, of course, the little details in the name set as mm. well with the red inside and yeah it's unbelievable Beauty, <laughs> love Beautiful. the match horns yeah man that's my pride and joy <laughs> um but yeah man um shirt number three what have you got for us <laughs> shirt number three i think i'm gonna go quite obvious here and um i'm gonna go with probably one that most people have mentioned yeah and it is the final salute as mm-hmm. i call it um it brings back Again, amazing memories. Um, I was again in North Bank on that day <laughs> um, for the last game. And I was actually wearing this. I know it wasn't this exact shirt, but because oh, I've got a couple of these, but it was, uh, I was wearing this shirt with the, you know, the, the, the final game t shirt that they gave out on the day over the top. Mm. And um, it just, I don't know, I'm thinking, um, you know, again, very lucky that I've seen us win the league three times, lift the trophy. But of all of those days, being an Arsenal fan, being at Highbury that day was better than all of them, yeah. which is something to say. But um, it was incredible. And it was uh, a real privilege to see the last moments of that stadium. And then obviously go to the Bergkamp testimonial at the Emirates and see that new ground, which looked like a spaceship back in the day. <laughs> it was yeah. unbelievable. But yeah, and the beauty of the shirt itself, you know, obviously the other hero in my life of course. <laughs> Thierry and um yeah love the simplicity of it and um and the color apparently maybe we did maybe we didn't wear this exact color when we moved in mm. uh, to, to Highbury they they think it might have just been a wrong colorized photo or something but yeah. I'd like to think we did and um I just love it yeah no love no the design I, and everything I completely agree and the match detailing yeah yeah, exactly. Um, one thing that I, t- I 
I always like do whenever I hear someone like talk about, you know, they were there, you know, the final game of Highbury. It's sort of rare that I bump into people that say that there's such a amazing moment. But what what was your feeling like, of course, like afterwards now, you know, in this sort of era, people look back and they say, God, we should never have left there or you know, especially like a few years ago when Wenger was sort of fading out, everyone was like, nah, we shouldn't have left and da 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 da. But what was your feeling there and then about, you know, moving to the Emirates and even Highbury? Um, I kind of, I was excited. Mm -hmm. One, because I knew that I was going to get a season ticket going to the Emirates when I hadn't had one at Highbury. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't have got one, really. Or it would have been a long time. Um, we were about to go to Paris for the Champions League final. Yeah. It felt like this was moving us to another level and we were going to kick on even further and dominate. Mm. That never happened, obviously. But, um, yeah, do I miss Highbury? Of course. That was where I grew up and mm. loved football. The amazing thing that not other football fans can do is you can go and wander around on the pitch that, exactly. uh, and, and see the old stands and you know, I've taken a few people that have come over to the UK uh, and showed them around and they're like, wow, this is unbelievable. Yeah. So, yeah, I was sad, but it was it was the right thing and it still is the right thing. Mm. And um, it's given so many more people the chance to go and watch Arsenal and it shouldn't be limited to, I know 38,000 is a lot of people, but it's nearly double that. And I think um, we need to move on and uh, sad, but and love that day, um, closing the curtain on the ground. But yeah, I think we're in a good place. And I have to say that those new banners they're putting around the ground, yeah. uh, I think they might already be up or they're going up. Yeah. They, 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 uh, I can't they, wait to see them on Sunday. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure if they'll be ready on Sunday, I think. Ah, yeah, soon I'm, enough. I know. I, I walked past a few times in the last couple of days and I've just been trying to like go back and check because I really want to see it all done. But I think they started to put some up and then they took some down maybe like due to testing and stuff. Um, I spoke to my brother who works in like building industry and he said that's probably what it was. So yeah, yeah it's a bit of a shame, but we will see it soon. And it's amazing how, you know, they they even sort of commemorate Highbury as well. They've got like a huge sort of wrap around with... Oh, them. that one, yeah, the East End, yeah. that yeah. for me, by far and away the best. And I know they've said they're holding one back that they haven't shown yet. Yeah, there's, um, I believe that's a fan collage. So it's basically, uh, um, it's loads of like mini pictures of fans. In uh, okay. Oh yeah, no, I've seen clips of that actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So guys on, on Instagram. Are you in there? Yeah, I'm in it, luckily. Oh, amazing. <laughs> yeah, amazing. It's really cool. Um, but yeah, that's, it's really amazing. Um, but yeah, yeah, it's really cool. Um, there was something that I wanted Sorry. to ask, but I sort of, gone out of my brain now um but yeah we'll just we'll just move on to to my next yeah yeah topic or or question really and it's basically about your printing of course everyone knows you as is yours gold um the guy who's the wizard with the heat press and the <laughs> shirts uh that you've got behind you man is is absolutely amazing and um i think i've said that like three times now but it's true like <laughs> it's, it's really true but um yeah, I wanted to ask how how you got into printing, really, and sort of where yeah. the should come from. Yeah, no, no, absolutely. Well, I think you know, I I had a pretty good collection um, up till twenty twenty, when it kind of it seemed like everyone got back into it again, right? And um, there were a few gaps that I wanted to fill, and a few shirts I wanted to print that um, um, I had in there. And I got in touch with uh, Footprint, um, Gary at Footprint, who used to work for CFS and mm -hmm. um, did great work. He did a good number of mine. Um, and then I kind of thought, oh, I could do with a new hobby. I'm not, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm not busy enough already with a full-time job and a, a little boy. I'll, I'll give myself something else to do. But, um, you know, I, uh, I wanted to teach myself a new skill. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, really the equipment's pretty basic um it's just about making sure you're you've got a good attention to detail and mm -hmm. um you avoid the mistakes but uh, no i wanted to but basically i did that because i wanted to finish off the few that were left in mm -hmm. my collection to um to make sure i had all of them printed which is my my goal 
mm-hmm. and, and I did that and then kind of got to the end of it. And I thought, oh, what do I do now? I've got this, <laughs> this heat press and uh, I enjoy doing it. And mm-hmm. then, you know, uh, it's still it's still fairly small thing that just keeps me busy a few evenings uh, um, a week um, doing a few shirts. And, and I love it, actually. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just a nice thing to do, you know. Uh, one thing it does allow me to do is just switch off from everything. There's not mm-hmm. many things that allow me to do that. Maybe building IKEA furniture or <laughs> uh, or doing this is the kind of thing that I can really just kind of zone out. I don't mm-hmm. know, put a podcast or put a game on, and mm-hmm. um, and then I can just kind of get it done. But yeah, love it. It's uh, it's it's good fun, and you know, it's led me to do some own, my own little projects, which I know Gav wanted to show. Yeah. Um, wanted me to show when I was coming on, um, yes. and that is a few little things that I've been uh, been produce uh, producing for myself. The um, wow, uh, the the second version of the No More Red, and you know it's a it's a fairly basic um, template shirt from I think I got it from Next, and wow. uh, it's exactly the one that they wore. I love the details. It's got if you can see, it's got the um, the same kind of um, patterning yeah. as uh as on the training kit i don't know if you could see that but um yeah let's just take that print it up i do actually love the the sleeve patches they're really yes. nice quality this year the um, detailing is, is amazing isn't it and of course with the old 14 on the top showing yes. with a leading <laughs> leading cup team and yeah i love it and it was just something i wanted to do do for myself and i got the boy if you can see that, if you can. Yeah. our boy yeah. Eddie on the back. Um, because, again, for me, I'm a completer. I need to have everything. So, yeah. therefore, <laughs> I needed to have this year's four for the uh, the charity shirt. And, yeah, very pleased with it. Yeah, that's amazing, so, man. Yeah. yeah, it's really nice. And I was saying to you as well, man, I need, I need one of those as well. I'm sure a lot of people <laughs> will be messaging you to to help them out with with the with the printing side of things and i think that's really cool man um it's it's really sick like i, was, I spoke to someone i think it was simon who also has been on the podcast he was like yeah, yeah, yeah i'd love to get one done and and i think he is so that's that's amazing man it's really good and um, yeah again it's it's like not you know not everybody has the facilities to do it so like hats off to you to for doing that man it's 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 massive i might even come to you myself like <laughs> i need to get one done <laughs> um, i think that i did um i think one thing i did say on this one particularly is that i don't think i it feels right to kind of you know take any 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 money for that kind of thing because it, because of the charity nature behind it right with the the anti knife crime so this one i'll uh I'll keep just to a limit limited run of two because I've got I've got an, a Fabio Vieira and an Eddie. Yes. But um uh, but yeah, it's a nice nice case to have. Um because um, I doubt I'll ever get one of the real ones. Yeah. No, I mean, yeah, me too, man. It's it's super difficult and I'm sure everybody <laughs> everybody wants a, a proper one. And um of course, but like if if somebody asks you, man, you shouldn't you shouldn't shy away from doing it because I feel like a lot of people <laughs> would really um and it's not like you know you're selling like you know the, the shirt in bulk and you know you you know you imported it and stuff it's it's harmless what you're doing man so i think it's really cool even if you you help others out but um yeah that's epic man i love the font on it too it's so unique and yeah. different to our to our current yeah i love the fact that it was um a bit different to last year because i think everyone was kind yeah. of expecting based on the promo shoots beforehand it just to be the same shirt again um, maybe with a different name set and actually they did the opposite they changed the font and the the patches but then they kept the um uh, the number set from uh from the uh, last season which actually is quite cool i think so yeah all in all a nice a nice piece yeah that's amazing man um and i, I also wanted to ask you as well um going off from that shirt specifically um like what are your what's your favorite name set obviously besides the 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 one we spoke about earlier with the right and the swoosh have you got a favorite one would you say yeah i think i'll I'll go something a bit different because yeah that 94 amazing love it the um the current seasons arsenal font love it if i'm gonna have one other choice 
I'm going to show you another one actually that I have down here. Oh, nice. That you will also recognize. Nice. Uh, and again, this is my kids' version of the same shirt. Yeah. But it's the 2005 <laughs> 6 Champions League Arsenal font. And it was kind of the first, I think, the first time we had a, a cool. real ch Champions League font rather than uh, they obviously took the, the logo out of the Premier League numbers for the Champions League before that. But um, yeah, love it. Gold, it's just so classy alongside the shirt and matching the front. And uh, yeah, with the, these patches, hopefully we'll be getting again soon next season. Yes, but we should be. <laughs> yeah, love it. Love it. Yeah, that's epic, man. I had um, I had one coming today with the uh, Hleb on the back. And it was oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. unbelievable, man. Unbelievable. That's one of the best fonts in the flesh as well. Uh, I'm not sure if, if we could see it on the camera. But it, it changes depending on, you know, the light you have it in. Yeah. But sometimes it will shine. I think we can see it. Yeah, it looks amazing. Really cool. Yeah. <laughs> and it looks even better with that kind of name on the back too. Yeah. <laughs> and it, it's crazy because I remember, like, I, I look back at that Champions League campaign, of course, the road to the finals and wearing it against Villarreal in the semis. And, you know, when we played Juventus and Madrid at home, and you just look back to that shirt and think it's so beautiful. It's amazing. And I think to myself, why didn't we wear that in Paris? You know, it was such a, yeah. it was, it was almost as if that would bring us like good luck or something. I don't know, man. It, it just felt weird wearing yellow in, in the finals, you know, but uh, yeah, no, I'm with you on that one. Yeah. Have you, have it wasn't you meant to be, shirt? have you got the shirt of the um, 05, 06 finals? A version of it. Um, a kind of a, a homemade version, I should call it. Obviously, the original yeah. shirt. Um, yeah. And then um, I've actually um, seen a few that have got the embroidery on it. Again, mm. done later. Uh, and that just looks incredible. But yeah, um, I think I've got an Henri uh, yeah. Champions League final. Yeah. And yeah, that was another disappointing day. Um, we went to Paris. We drove drove to Paris, uh, went on the ferry, wow. and um, uh, there was about six of us, I think. Uh, Did you go... We didn't get in the ground. Ah, yeah. Yeah, we that was one where we tried to get a ticket on the day. I think I took like 500 quid with me, and people just laughed. They were like, no chance, not with that kind of money. And that yeah. was that was how long ago? Nearly 20 years ago. Yeah. And um, uh, we ended up going to a bar to watch it. And people, I think when Lehman got sent off, people in the pub, Arsenal fans, were throwing like plastic bottles at the telly. Yeah. Like, what are you doing? And they, they <laughs> completely chucked us out of the pub. They oh, closed no. the pub. So we were left outside for the Champions League final going on next to the stadium. And we couldn't even watch it. And it was oh. hammering with rain. So we were wandering around the stadium trying to find another bar. And then we heard a scream yeah. inside the stadium. And the, just you can tell the difference between Spanish and an English celebration. Because yes. Spanish is like oh yeah and english is yeah, yeah. so we knew yeah. that we'd scored but we couldn't work out who'd scored it yeah. um if it uh, you know what was going on until we found a tiny little bar with a tiny little telly probably yeah. 10 minutes walk from the ground yeah and uh yeah we watched the disappointment of the rest of the game from there so we even met the only champions league final goal we've ever scored we heard but we didn't see yeah oh that's so unfortunate man. <laughs> but honestly i don't want to talk about that doom and gloom final so Let's move on to the <laughs> finals. Uh, have you got any sort of standout shirts um, from like a finals and stuff that you that you really like and and appreciate? Well, for me, um, I grew up um, like obsessed with the FA Cup. Mm. Seeing us win the FA Cup, that was like the peak. We didn't think about the European Cup, Champions League back then. It mm. was the FA Cup. I remember even when Arsenal weren't playing. Um, this makes you sound really old, but we, like we'd watch Soccer AM at like seven in the morning, and that would be the start of the cup final coverage that would take you all the way through till three or whenever it started. And um, I kind of always wanted to go to one. That was my dream. I yeah. missed out on tickets in '98, in '02, in '03, '05. Mm -hmm. So I missed all of them. Didn't get a ticket, and then the the next three, which I had to wait a long time for, Hull, Villa. And Chelsea, uh, I managed to go to sat, obviously, 
right in the lower tier in the middle behind the goal in the Arsenal end. And that was like a dream come true for me to, uh, you know, sing Abide With Me. Um, And, you know, that's something my dad would have done with his dad. So it's kind of bringing on a uh, kind of generations of, of cup finals. And it was just amazing. So I would say out of those three, the first one's special because that was the first one that I've seen us win. But the most enjoyable, beating Chelsea. Yeah, that was, of course. That was it's awesome. got to be, yeah. Yeah, that Ramsey goal, they'd equalised, I think, Costa, yeah, Costa. And then we took it straight down the other end. Ramsey headed it in, in front of us, and we just yeah. went mental. It was yeah. unbelievable. <laughs> and <laughs> we, didn't, we didn't expect to do anything that day. Like mm-hmm. we we were expecting to get turned over, I think. Yeah, we, we were, were very positive. Because yeah, think... Chelsea just won the league exactly. with Conte, yeah. and and yeah, to to do that against them was just brilliant. So yeah. like, happy days. Epic, epic man. So well... I'd say that one. So, and that was ah, uh, that would have been Puma. That would kind of have a red line. Yes, down the middle, and actually, it was kind of based on this shirt, right? It was mm-hmm. um. Um, yeah, so got one with Ramsey on it with a cup final detailing, and Sick. yeah, that's a that's a cool shirt. Sick, yeah. So the one thing that um me and Gav were speaking about before we got on with you was um a, a new sort of feature to the show, which was home and away and third, <laughs> and it's basically where we pick a random season um and we sort of decide what our favorite is. Uh, what our favorite kit is from that year something a little bit interactive and I'm sure um, we want to hear what everyone else thinks as well but um, so since you're here I wanted to ask you from the 0708 season of course we had the free shirts we had I believe the same home shirt that we had from when we yeah you know we came into the Emirates and then we had the white sort of commemoration to you know Herbert Chapman with the writing yeah and- everything like that and then the third was you know the classy burgundy and the the color with the collar and yeah they all had amazing details but of course I just wanted to ask what is your favorite from that uh, I was having to think about this actually and um the season itself because it's not just about the shirt for me it's also about the memories of the shirt The Mm -hmm. shirt the season itself was a bit of a a disaster, <laughs> right? <laughs> um, to put it mildly, I think we'd lost we'd lost Henri the summer before. Um, we had Eduardo break his leg against Birmingham, wh- which meant we kind of dropped the league, where we were in a great position. Um, we lost to Liverpool in the Champions League, Man United in the FA Cup, and Spurs in the League Cup, and that was the last time they won a trophy. Uh, nearly twenty years ago, by the way. Oh uh, no. How long? 15 years ago, by the way, which is is good to hear. But um, I was trying to think of memories, actually. And I would say that out of the three, my favourite is still the home, actually. Right. Now, the home, because because it's kind of got that memory of new beginnings at uh, at the Emirates. It was a rare occasion. Well, probably one of the last times we would have had the same home shirt for two seasons. Mm -hmm. And... um, you know, it was a simple classic shirt with a bit of gold trim on the collar, and um, I actually really liked that shirt. That was uh, yeah. that one definitely got a lot of wear um, over the years. But um, mm. yeah, I like the simplicity of it in yeah, that season. So that that would be my number one. Yeah, man, that's that's epic. I'd say the fit of it as well was quite loose. It was quite nice and baggy, and um, yeah, it was it was a really nice shirt with a pinstripe on the side, but. Um, yeah, I would I would say that is amazing, but I look back to the to the memories of you know the when I was a kid I had the the Chapman the white one, and yeah. for some reason I absolutely loved it. I don't know what it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It might have been just the gold <clears throat> font, um, but I had a Van Persie in that shirt um, when he was <laughs> number eleven. Yeah, he was amazing. Like, yeah. yeah, and he was. I think he played so well at the start of the season, and then he got injured as well. And it sort of broke my heart because he was playing amazingly. Like every time I'd see him, he'd score a goal. And I mean, that's what you want from your strikers. But yeah. for me, I'd say that that one there, that the away shirt, um, is, is probably the most. 
I, I remember at the time we'd not had a white away for a long time yeah. even if in, in our history it was actually quite a common shirt right going back to the beginning and there was a lot of people that were like not happy with a white shirt for yeah. obvious reasons <laughs> but i i agree i kind of liked it it was something a bit different i remember the the release of it they took photos down on the arsenal tube i think yeah. um or they were walking from from highbury to yeah. uh, to the emirates as well like the players mm -hmm. so it was it was it was a cool shirt i remember eduardo it would have been eduardo at a point where he was like killing it doing really well mm. and um uh i, I remember we would have been... well. um Henri was in the campaign wasn't he um that's, there's like the yeah yeah which is of him at the Arsenal tube station. I think he's like, he's next to like Fabregas and there's like newspapers that are just sitting there. And oh man, I'll get some photos up for everyone to see. But yeah, it's just a bit, it's a bit heartbreaking <laughs> that he wouldn't yeah. to play in it. But um, yeah. Yeah, no, it's a nice shirt. Yeah, I look back on it. Happy memories, you know. Um, uh, again, going, going to every game basically at home. Um, in that season the second season I would have done that and um yeah it could have been an incredible season as it turned out it wasn't it wasn't great but um that was probably one of the last times we were really challenging other than mm -hmm. the maybe Leicester season mm -hmm. um where we came right at the end but yeah, yeah. we're back again yeah we're back here <laughs> again and yeah that before before we wrapped it up I really wanted to get your sort of opinion on on the last sort of week or so obviously we come off that amazing north london derby victory and you know won there and you know the spirits are so high and we've sort of just snapped up two players after missing out on mudrick and uh, some people saying blessing in disguise you know we didn't spend all that money um obviously we signed trossard now um what's your thoughts yeah on um do you know i i my initial reaction was like a little bit underwhelming, if I'm totally honest. But then I step back and look at it, and you see a player that scored a hat trick at Anfield this season. You saw a player that can play with two feet. He can um, he can play on the wings. He can play through the middle. In fact, I saw an interview with him earlier where he said he he prefers playing through the middle. Wow. You know, is there space for him there now? No, but we we need options, and Arteta loves to have variety and people that can play in different positions you know you look at Zinchenko you look at Erdegaard and Saka and Martinelli and I think he'll be a good addition I don't think he'll be a first choice at least in the league but um, yeah we need it there is no doubt we need it and you know I don't know much about the Polish defender that we've picked up but again I think he's left footed so yeah. he's a backup for Gabriel which again is something we need um, I'm a bit more nervous about a centre midfielder for a, like a Partey replacement. You know, we've got El Nenny. I still like him. Yeah. But I think we need numbers now because you never know what's going to happen. And mm -hmm. this is our chance, right? I think if we don't take this chance now to go for the league and you see Chelsea trying to a car crash of a rebuild, but they're going to get there. <laughs> yeah. You know, United seem to be getting better. I don't know about Liverpool. Spurs, I'm enjoying at the moment, but <laughs> you know, I can't see... I can't see a, as big an opportunity for us to win the league in a long time. And if we can win it now, we can then push on even further and just really hope that we can do it. Long, long way to go, though, so yeah. I'm not getting carried away. Yeah, I, no, I, I'm with you in that boat um, of, you know, just seizing the moment and then, you know, just worrying about the summer transfer when that comes sort of thing. Like now is is really like sort of do or die really because you don't know where we'll be next year we might have like a bit of a a bumpy start you know we might pick up a draw but everything so far apart from you know united away where arguably we should have won that as well um it's been sort of perfect you know there's been you know we yeah. haven't had as much controversy with you know the yarn sort of decisions that have gone you know against us which has changed the outcome of games it's been sort of a steady sort of road now and I just feel like if we don't get that back up CM and you know when their legs become a bit jaded towards the end of the season um we have to have someone there to, to you know you know be in this yeah. party position and yeah that's that's what I feel yeah I mean you, we've got to ask the question whether we go 
um, whether how seriously we take the FA Cup and the mm. Europa League. I'm sure there'll be people saying, what am I talking about? But, you know, um, the Europa League was really a route to the Champions League. Mm -hmm. And we're looking pretty good to be in the Champions League next season. Mm -hmm. Well, it's only worth going deeper in the Europa League if we're really serious about winning it. And yeah. of course, Arteta will be. But well, could that be an expense of the league? I don't know. Um, mm -hmm. What he'll say is we want to win every single game. And I'd love us to. But I think we've got to be a bit more diplomatic with the kind of teams we choose yes. to play in the Europa and and still obviously go for the win. But, you know, the likes of Partey and others, they can't play every game. So yeah. I'd rather they played in the league. Yeah. And let's see how we go. Yeah. And, and that's why I sort of, I understand the, the new centre-back signing. Like a lot of people sort of scratching their heads at it. But I think it's pretty wise, you know, we're getting a, a 20, you know, million pound player. Um, you know, every, no one really expected a centre back. And, you know, for me, I saw pretty much Gabriel play every, nearly every single yeah. Europa League group stage game. And I thought it was like, you know, he's got a lot to deal with here. He's playing Thursday, Sunday. And, you know, that, that was sort of ongoing and he didn't really have a rest. So now we can sort of take him out of, of the starting lineup, same with Saliba if need be, and just slot him right in there. And hopefully that little bit more of depth could even, you know, take us over the line in that competition as well. But um, we'll see anyways, we'll see. But I just wanted to get your opinion, man. Fingers crossed. Um, but usually Gav asks this question um, when he's here. <laughs> I'm sure you know what I'm going to say, but yeah, yeah. the question is, can we win the league? <laughs> definitely, definitely. Of course we can. Yeah. Uh, will we win the league? Um, I'm a bit more pragmatic about, I think, you know, there is so far to go, but mm -hmm. we're in the most amazing position. And City are not playing as they normally play. Mm -hmm. They are, I know Guardiola has already started the mind games. I've yes. seen, <laughs> like, oh, you know, give up on the league or, you know, Arsenal is theirs to win, etc. Yeah. all that rubbish. Um, but, yeah, I think I'll be really more convinced if we can beat United on Sunday and if we can um, beat City at home in a few weeks' time. Those are the two that I'm really focused on. You know, yeah. and we've got the run of games we've got coming up, I think the next seven games, apart from those two, are good games to play. I'm not going to say they're easy games. They're good yeah. games against teams kind of, you know, you would expect us to beat. So if yeah. we can put a big run together or keep that run going, then look after the City game. And I'd be much more confident if we can get six points out of those two. Mm. And, you know, I put on I put on a tenner at the start of the season in June for us to win the league. And I keep checking the cash out button. <laughs> and I think I'm up to up to 180 quid. And I'm like, no, I'm not, I'm not cashing out. <laughs> so if that answers your question, then um hopefully it's clear that I, I think yeah. we can win it. Yeah, you do have faith and it's it's always good to keep the faith and um as Arteta says, game by game is is what they're looking at. And yeah, I, c I couldn't help but agree, man. It's just it's just so crazy, man. I can't wait for Sunday, man. Bring it on. Um are you gonna give a prediction before we bounce? <laughs> the United game. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, people that know me know that I say three one for every single game we play in. So <laughs> I won't deviate from that. We're going to beat him three one. Um, I, I want to see Eddie get another one. Keep his uh, keep 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 getting on the in the goals and you know yeah. Saka, Erdegaard is unbelievable at the moment. So yeah, I'll take that three one. Yeah, man, I'm positive as well, man. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. I was gonna say three one as well. You know, that's that's not a bad sell. I, I see it happening because. You know what, man, you're like, they'll just nick a lucky goal and they think that the game's on. And Gary Neville will start getting it all excited, but let's put them back in their place. Um, hopefully, you know, with Casemiro being out and, you know, after that yellow card and their 1-1 one -one, um, draw late in, the, yeah. late in the game will sort of knock them well, a I bit. Well, I just hope, just hope the ref keeps an eye on McTominay so he doesn't kick our players all over the pitch oh. like he did at Old Trafford because, I mean, what a clogger. But there we go. 
yeah man but yeah listen thank you for joining man it's been an absolute pleasure and you know of course we were without gav but i think we put on a good show for everyone yeah <laughs> well, yeah always a bit nervous in these things but it's, uh, it was great and i appreciate uh appreciate being invited on and you know we've we've dealt with each other for a long time now so yeah, yeah you know um appreciate your help with everything and got a few few little shirts off you as well so that that's been amazing so keep up the good work and uh, i love just watching uh, your thing grow as well so it's great thank you bro thank you appreciate the support of course you was like a sort of friend from day one when i started it really you was always um you was always there and you know a member of the site and you'd always sort of talk to me about this shirt so it's amazing that we're here sort of three years on from the pandemic and talking about yeah exactly <laughs> winning the league and the shirt <laughs> it's it's a great time but yeah appreciate you coming on man um if if anybody um follows me make sure you follow is yours goal too um i'm sure you're gonna want your shirts printed up um if you haven't already so head on over there and yeah man peace cheers peace bro thank you man